Hi all, I have another very very exciting game to show you from the US Chess Championship. Yeah, there's a wolf of games in it because there's so many heavyweight players. There's Caruana, there's Nakamura, and there's Wesley So. We've got three heavyweight players, super grandmasters, in this tournament this year, so it's fantastic. That's what I can uh, perceive. So E4, Fabiana Caruana against Honest Chuck. E5, we go into a Roy Lopez and we get the Archangelist system, this early bishop C5, Archangelist, uh, it's that like angel system, so C3, B5, early B5, and now an early D5, so there's very aggressive stuff actually, the usual move is D4 here, this is slightly rarer, A4, we see D takes E4, A takes B5, now here bishop G4 was played, I was checking this, um, technically, in this position, if e takes, white doesn't play, want to play this, b takes, but rather wants to delay for a moment with queen takes f3, and this is quite good for white, uh, as it works out. Uh, it turns out to be quite good for white, although it can get a little bit uh, complex, but uh, yeah, from there, that's that's how to play this position. Black could, could play this, and there's an interesting line like this, for example. But uh, let's not go go there. <laughs> the game's complicated enough as it is. So let's go back to the game. D takes E4. A takes, in fact, instead of E takes F3, we have this pin, Bishop G4. And we have B takes C6. And it seems as though Black's achieved something here with E takes F3. The pawn cannot be left. It would be too dangerous. Uh, you'd think and it's it's not left but on g takes f3 isn't this a bit wrecked this pawn structure it is an extra pawn for the moment as the captured pieces here show uh it is an extra pawn uh but horrible double pawns the thing is in this position it's actually quite interesting these double pawns of the bishop e6 because the possibility of f4 does make black central control a little bit looser than usual the, the possibility of just playing f4 striking at the center but that wasn't played immediately instead we see rook a5 lateral pressure on both c5 and e5 so this battle of central control has really started and it seems to be already greatly in white's favor with this extra, extra pawn which is now used resourcefully to try and battle the key central squares with f4 there's an immediate threat here of taking and then d4, which would open up the bishop, control g5 and fork bishop and queen there. So black has to react to f takes e5. He commits to e4, but now this aggressive move d4. And white's doing so well at this opening, it seems, here. After e takes d3, you can look at the, the battle for the center here that uh, white has great central pressure. Uh, black castled here, and white took on d6. The bishop has to take this under pressure. Rook d1, you can see white's rook's quite active. And the double pawns are not too bad here. This is helping control the e5 square. But uh, a resourceful looking move, bishop g4 now is played. So is this tricky for white, this position? Trying to come in onto the weakened squares because there's no g-pawn. So a bishop can install itself on f3, which not only looks at c6, could set up some back row possibilities. We see rook d4 in response. And then bishop f3 is played, hitting c6. And for the moment, this is actually protected with bishop a4 clinging onto that pawn. It could be a very important pass pawn later. Rook f8, threatening a mate in one. This is addressed with bishop e3. Now we have knight e4. Now knight e4 uh, is held by the bishop, and this bishop looks quite aggressive on f3. And the bishop is not eyeing c6, a kind of weakness of the last move. It's not eyeing c6, which gives a breathing moment for this bishop. It doesn't have to hold c6, and it actually comes back to challenge this aggressive bishop its counterpart on f3 and that's swapped off they swap each other off 
So here now rook ab8 is played and a very very powerful move indeed now is played. Uh, it looks as though black is tempting white to play a move like b4 but this might tactically fall victim to a move like knight takes c3, knight takes bishop takes b4 looks good. Um, as, as one example but um okay no white cleverly plays a kind of positional pawn sacrifice here white plays knight d2 just letting the b pawn go and it gets a crucial bit of time here black in this position should perhaps consider a radical move while the knight is here it actually supports an aggressive g5 that could actually be one of the better moves in the position believe it or not in this particular position because there's still pressure on b2 but in the game the b pawn was taken immediately and we're going to see a big downside of this now after knight takes e4 rook takes e4 you can see both rooks have left black's first rank and there's no pawn move there's been no luft created for the king so how can white exploit this lack of luft, this air, lack of air for the king? There's a fantastic move here, a bone crushing move, super GM move, which was probably missed by Alexander Onischuk here. So a really crushing move. I've given you a clue. Both rooks have left the first rank. So what would you play here if I give you five seconds starting from now? Okay, rook e5, oh there. <laughs> if bishop takes d6, we have rook d8 checkmate. So here, black actually was a bit desperate because also it seems rook takes e5 doesn't really help black this position. If the bishop has to go back, maybe even stronger than rook d8 with the idea of bishop c5 is actually rook d7 this pawn is virtually unstoppable this c6 pawn in this line because if we try to go behind we can support it it's virtually unstoppable in the variations i checked anyway uh it's actually much stronger than rook d8 because on rook d8 um there's rook b5 and black maybe fights a little bit longer but this whole thing has to be avoided so black actually doesn't do this he plays rook takes e3. Yep, he's the exchange down. It doesn't look good to be the exchange down. Rook a5 hitting a6. And in fact, after king f8, just letting a6 go, but it's not even taken here. White has another interest in the position. Maybe there's a concern bishop c5 and black's playing on a bit longer maybe but uh it's a great position anyway c4 is played here with the idea of simply c5 and rook d7 because this pawn is the most important pass pawn for white and it's here black felt his position was hopeless and resigned yeah there does seem to be some very short brutal tactical encounters in in the u.s championship this year between the super gms and and the and the uh, gms it's it's just the resourcefulness in, in chess positions is, is vast, the resolution of, of resources. And we see that difference, that the super GMs can see that a little bit more. They can fight for the center a little bit more resourcefully. They can use uh, slight, slight weaknesses in the position more resourcefully. And the end result is devastation like this. A 28 move victory here, but resigning after C4. So I'm fascinated by these, these heavyweight games against the, the ordinary GMs. I hope you are too and get something out of them. I hope we can all learn from them. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.